everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. It is time for another big historical project. I'm very excited for this. I haven't done a big historical project in a while now, several months. So yeah, it's time for one. And this one is going back to a decade that I have not done since 2010. So it has actually been 12 years, almost exactly, because that was a fall project as well, almost exactly 12 years since I worked on a project from the 1850s. Now I have done a couple of 18, well several, 1860s outfits over the years, but yeah, there's just something about the 1850s that I've never gone back to it. And I think that one of the reasons may actually be because I still regularly wear that outfit that I made back in 2010, literally the second historical costume that I ever made, and I still wear it, and I still like it. And honestly, it's super versatile. I've worn it in like theater a whole bunch of times. If you were watching my channel last year, you saw me wear that as Joe because I altered the ball gown bodice for that dress. Uh, I will post a link to that video down here in the description if you want to go check that out. But this is an all new 1850s dress in I have to admit a somewhat similar style. So I am actually planning on doing a deep dive through the 1850s and the fashion evolution from 1850 through 1859. That I think when you're watching this that should hopefully be the next video like the Saturday video. So make sure that you're subscribed and hit the bell icon so that you're notified when that video comes out. But yeah, the 1850s is an interesting time because you don't actually see a ton of change through the decade. It's a lot of like really kind of small little elements that change here and there and then continue to change through the 1860s. And I will eventually probably next month do an 1860s deep dive as well because things definitely start to speed up at the end of that decade. But for the 1850s, I've been doing a lot of research on, you know, what dress I wanted to make. This is all inspired by this plaid fabric that I got, I think about a year ago at Joann's of all places. This is either a tiny, tiny bit of slubbed silk taffeta or a very, very, very low slub silk dupioni. I think you can tell like right here, there is a slub. There's a couple like here. It's very, very low slub. So I am so excited because I found this for like a ridiculously low price. So I don't know about you. I've lucked out two or three times now at Joann's where in the home deck flat fold section, they will randomly put silk taffeta or silk dupioni. They'll put silk fabric and it's like they don't even know it's silk because they put it starting at like $9 a yard and then you can use a coupon. So I think I paid like maybe about five or six dollars a yard for this. Like what? I know it was crazy. I felt like I had robbed the place as I walked out. So it's a lot of yardage. It's this many yards. I honestly can't remember how many exactly it was. I think it's actually like 10 yards, maybe even a little bit over. So I have a ton of this, which is one of the reasons that I decided to make an 1850s dress. Also, when I see plaids like this, my brain goes 1850s, 1890s. I've done a fair amount of 1890s recently. So 1850s was the winner. So then came the next question of, okay, I have this great plaid. What kind of 1850s dress do I want to make with it? So I started going through Pinterest, as you do, looking at all of the different fashion plates. And I finally stumbled on this fashion plate right here, which is from 1859. And I fell in love. What can I say? It is just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, this one is all sorts of like springtime beautifulness with its light blue and white and those are totally my colors but you know doing something purple this time branching out being good and I felt like my purple plaid would also work really really well in this and then for the contrast in this fashion plate that's where I'm kind of having a hard time deciding because when I found that fabric I think it was, I can't remember which one I got first, but sometime around that same time, either a little before or a little after, I actually won some fabric from Fancy Styles Fabric on one of those Instagram lives they used to do. And I won this purple, I think it's a silk blend velvet. 
Now, of course, that means it's going to be absolutely awful to work with. I must have had this first because I used some of this last year, <laughs> but uh, it is actually the perfect color for this perfect color match. So that's what I'm thinking maybe to do for those bands. However, I did notice that those bands, it's almost like a frayed ribbon. So on the edges, the long edges of those blue bands that are in the fashion plate, it's frayed. And I don't know that I can or want to do that with silk velvet. So one of the other options that I have is that I have this yellow silk taffeta that is left over both from my Titanic deck dress and also my 1890s gala gown, both of which I made in 2017, 2018-ish toward our 2018 costume college. So I have a little bit of this left. This I would potentially be able to fray because I know that silk taffeta, you can do that. It's kind of nightmare inducing, but you can do that. So that is an option as well. Or the other option would be like go to Joann's and see if maybe there's a ribbon that matches and either don't worry about the fray at all or yeah, no, I don't want to fray a ribbon. So maybe the don't worry about the fray at all would be the other option. But yeah, so those are the fabrics for this project. So let's talk about the patterns a little bit because again, the 1850s, it changes like very, very subtly and you actually see a lot of sort of contrasting things that are happening all at the same time. So one of the biggest hallmarks to the 1850s is the pagoda sleeve like you see in this fashion plate that I'm going to make. And pretty much like if you see a pagoda sleeve, it's 1850s. That really doesn't seem to have kind of crossed over into the 1860s, except for maybe like 1860, like the first year of the decade. And then the sleeves got narrower. They kind of came in a little bit down at the bottom, well, a lot of it down at the bottom. And that's the 1860s sleeve. So 1850s, definitely the pagoda is a hallmark. Now, not every 1850s sleeve had a pagoda. But if you see the pagoda sleeve, it is almost certainly an 1850s outfit. So obviously I'm doing the pagoda sleeve of this fashion plate. And so I went through all of my patterns and was looking, okay, let's see, you know, what pattern has a pagoda sleeve? What pattern has a bodice that comes up high at the neck? Because you can see in the fashion plate that it does come up high at the neck. And then the question is, what do I want for the waist? Because of course the fashion plate has the hands here with the big full sleeves at the waist so we can't see what's going on at the waist. So I was taking a look at a whole bunch of other fashion plates. I found like this fashion plate for example which again has the bows going down the front but it's actually all cut in one. There's no waist seam. Likewise I found this fashion plate that also is the same thing with a front decoration and no waist seam. I want a waist seam. I just feel like it's more flattering to have a waist seam. So one of the most popular waist seams of this time was a point. Now you could have a whole different number of how pointy you want your waist seam to be. Like this one, this point could kill a person. That is such a sharp point. And it's too much and it's too difficult and I don't wanna do that. I want kind of a, a slightly more gradual point. So again, I was looking at my patterns to see what would be best. And the two that I really came up with were the Truly Victorian TV 440-1859 Pagoda Bodice because hey, doing an 1859, so that seems pretty darn appropriate. And then the other one that I actually found was this old Simplicity pattern. It's Simplicity 4510, and it's uh, by Martha McCain. And it is this lady right here. Hopefully you can see, I know she's a little dark, but you can see the point here. Now, the main difference with these two patterns is that this one has a point in the back as well, and this one is flat in the back, and then the sleeve is different. I've heard the sleeves on this one honestly are not the best. And the sleeves on this are actually a little bit closer to what I'm going to be going for for this because it's kind of a dropped pagoda on the fashion plate that I'm doing, which is more what this is, I think, from judging by this picture. So I will have to, you know, cut out all the pieces and see <laughs> what's gonna be better. But I think that this is a better sleeve jumping off point. So what I want to do here though, is I'm going to actually cut out both patterns and then compare the bodice pattern pieces and see how it goes. Now, obviously, simplicity patterns, this one does actually go up to a size 24, but even a size 24, depending on how much ease they add, why do they add ease? 
depending on how much ease they add, it could mean, you know, it's like a size 26, a size 22, etc. So I do usually wind up being around a size 24 pattern because there's ease built in. We'll see how that goes. Uh, the other one with this is, of course, this doesn't have a skirt attached. This has a skirt attached. Ideally, I would love to make this two separate pieces, but in the 1850s, unless you have the sort of jacket bodice look where it comes down and it kind of has that peplum look, those were cut separately with a different bodice from your skirt. That's what I did last time. But otherwise, they were usually attached which is slightly less versatile. Just for contrast sake, just so you can see what I did last time, this was the pattern that I did last time. I loved this pattern, honestly. I mean, I was not a great sewist at the time and I really did like this pattern. I think it made up to a great jacket, bodice, etc. And I honestly am still a little bit tempted to use it this time, but I just feel like I should do something different and also, I don't feel like I'm seeing, even though she does have all of her, you know, big sleeves here, I don't feel like I'm seeing that there is anything in front. The last option that I could do for the bodice hem area is I could do a separate one that has a point in front and then sort of a tail in the back. That does seem to have existed. I saw a fashion plate somewhere. If I can find it, I'll put it right here because I don't remember if I saved it, but I did see one fashion plate. And then also in my fashions and costumes from Good Ace Lady book, I have this, which is an 1858. Hers, I don't think is in a point in the front, but it just does have that tiny little tail. And similar to this pattern where she also has the tiny little tail in the front. So it's possible that maybe I could kind of combine this, do a tiny little tail in the back with a point in the front and cut them separately because I feel like I would still get the right line. So yeah, basically the first thing I'm gonna be doing is cutting out a whole bunch of different patterns and comparing them. So let's go ahead and see what all that looks like. So I finally have all of the patterns cut out, which I tell you was seriously no joke. This right here, this is all of the pattern pieces for that simplicity pattern, that purple dress pattern. This one right here, which this isn't even all of the pattern pieces because as you can see, this envelope is still full. So these are all the different sizes and everything, but these are all of the ones that I needed. There's, I don't even know how many, like so many. And then we have here the bodice pieces. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the truly Victorian, which is the white one on the bottom, the purple simplicity right here. And then also the old simplicity that I used last time is on top, just to look at those different lines, because I really do want to make this a separate bodice than the skirt whereas this is really one all together. It has you put them all together. So the other things that are interesting here is that if we look at this truly Victorian pattern, nowhere on here does this actually show a pointed back. And yet, when we look at the back pattern pieces, it's a pointed back. Also, this pattern doesn't show you that it also has like the collar, the undersleeves, etc. It does actually come with those. So just FYI, I have only skimmed the instructions, but nowhere does it say like you can opt to cut it, you know, at the natural waist versus have a point. So it's really interesting that the line drawing is a flat back when it actually is a pointed back. So just FYI, if you're planning to use this pattern, this does in fact have a pointed back. I don't know if in these instructions it tells you this is now how you attach a skirt that you purchase separately, but my guess is probably with that kind of back. But honestly, I'm not seeing anything about that. No, it just says finish the waistline with piping. So yeah, it doesn't, I guess this does make up into a separate bodice, but if you have a separate bodice that is just a little point back or even a flat back, it's probably going to separate from the skirt. So 
I don't know, I feel like you'd actually want to attach this to a skirt versus this one where it really is a jacket that goes over the skirt. In any case though, let's take a look at the differences between these patterns. So for the Truly Victorian, I have cut this to the largest size, which I am not the largest size, but honestly, I'm finding the choose the size section very confusing. You can see my pink marks. I'm all over the place. So like bust and waist, I'm just slightly larger than a J, but not yet a K. But my back width, which I've always known that my back is narrow, my back width, it's an H. My like adjusted front is a K, a little larger than a K. And my armhole is an N and my back length is off the charts. So yeah, I really wasn't sure what size to cut. So I just cut the largest size because then also like if I want to use this for someone else or resell this or whatever, I have that ability to do that. So looking at the largest size on here and the largest size on here, which is a size 24, which is my waist size, but is way huge in the bust. I'll get to the bust ease when I look at the front, but it's it's ridiculous. So let's take a look here at these pattern pieces. They're honestly pretty similar. I mean, yes, we are seeing more room here and a little bit different shape, especially up here for the Truly Victorian. Part of that is going to be the different size. Like if I'm a J, mine goes to here as opposed to here. So a little bit of that is just the different size. But also simplicity patterns do tend to be very wide shouldered. Now this is an era of wide shoulders. So part of that is that but we're off the charts over here so I tend to believe that maybe the Truly Victorian is a little more accurate as far as shape up here the points again pretty similar the Truly Victorian is actually a little bit longer of a point even if we just look at my size line and also a little bit wider at this back here which that I feel like is kind of more of an aesthetic thing than anything else but there you go so it's a little bit wider both of these are cut on the fold if we compare both of those to the one that I used last time, we're really seeing a lot, a lot of differences. So it is significantly wider here. I mean, we almost lose that sort of fiddle back look that I talked about in my last video about examining that 1860s bodice, where in the 1850s and 60s, it was really common to have that fiddle back shape, unlike the bodice I showed you last week. So this one, it's just not graceful. Like this is a really nice graceful curve. This one is a lot less graceful. Uh, we do have a pretty similar width right here to the Truly Victorian. It's just not as curved out. So yeah, that, I mean, that's pretty cool that they're pretty similar in width. And then this one has the tail. And so that is what I'm thinking that I want some semblance of tail, not a full one. But like if we look at this Patterns of Fashion pattern, now this is 1861. So we're a little bit later, two years later, but I really like the look of that kind of tail that fans out there and then having the point in front. So this is kind of what I was talking about earlier when I had mentioned that I'd seen, I thought I saw a fashion plate, maybe I just saw this. But yeah, I really kind of like that. I don't know if it was a thing in the 50s though. In the 50s it might just be that we have full or point, but I do like this idea so I may actually go with that. So that is the back. Let's take a look at the side. The sides are really where we have the most variation. I mean when we look at the Truly Victorian versus the Simplicity pattern, they're almost completely different. Even if we take this down as far as like this, you know, would be the size in here, the shape in the arm's eye is so different. The curve out over here is so different. And I actually find this interesting because if you remember from the back, the Truly Victorian was longer, but here we have that the Simplicity is longer. So that is different. And then obviously the length here, because this has pivoted, like if we actually look at the length, it's probably, yeah, pretty similar, but it's so pivoted. I mean, look at that difference. That's huge. And then of course, if we add this one on top, it's like not even the same. So remember this one had a wider back. So that would fill in this area over here because that's part of the back piece and that's why this is a lot narrower here and then obviously this goes into a skirt which I'm not gonna need this much skirt from the side back I'll need like a little bit if I do that little tail but not nearly that much but yeah just totally totally different so I'm gonna have to choose kind of which one is the right one for me 
So now looking at the front, you can see that they're actually pretty similar. The biggest difference here is the rise in the shoulder of the Truly Victorian pattern piece. And frankly, I mean, if I'm looking at size J, it actually starts here and then comes to about where this is. So if anything, I guess it's actually more the rise in the shoulder of the simplicity pattern that is taller on this side right here. It's giving more room in the arm side, which is interesting because the backs really didn't have that much difference. The sizes here are also pretty interesting. Now, I don't know if with the Truly Victorian, if there is like a center, you know, front. I guess if we line this up with J, which is there, and then take that. Okay, so that would be the J equivalent. So actually now they're super, super off lining it up with J. I mean, this would be the J cut line here. So I guess that makes it a little closer, but the angle of the arm's eye and the shoulder has become totally different if we line up this with the J line of the center front and of the neckline. So yeah, that throws it off a whole lot more than just kind of laying each other on top. But again, the bust here, so I was talking about the ease before. Look at this ridiculous ease. Size 24 bust is 54 and three quarter inches. Just for comparison's sake, the bust measurement is a 46 inch. So that is eight and three quarter inches of ease in the bust. Now, this pattern does actually come with bust padding, which was very common in this area to fill in this little gap right here where it would kind of sink going towards the arm's eye. And I believe that is where this like goes to because just looking at these dots right here, if you are filling that in, that is to fill in that area. It's not to fill out the bust here. And it comes in different sizes. So this is the large, this is the medium, and this is the small. So if you are very large busted and maybe you don't need as much fill there, you could just have that little bit right in the sort of crevice of your arm's eye. But it is very interesting that it comes with the bust padding, but this is still not going to make an eight and three quarter inch difference in your bust. That is ridiculous. So obviously if I do use this pattern, I'm going to have to do a ton of alteration in the bus to get this to fit me because eight and three quarter inches, like what were they thinking? So throwing this one on top, we still have a ridiculous amount of ease. We're at six and three quarter inches, so slightly less ridiculous, but still bad. And yet I don't understand this because this is saying that the ease is only three and three quarter inches, but the bust measurement on this pattern is 46. So I don't get that at all. They completely messed up their math. Yeah, so we still have a lot of ease. And this pattern is pretty similar to the other simplicity because this center front, like if we line that up, this is a facing on the other pattern. And now it's pretty similar except for the side where it is actually a lot wider. Um, we do obviously have some differences in the arm's eye or really the shoulder as well, but it's a little bit more similar. I am not going to need this peplum bit at all. I'm definitely following these lines on the front piece. So I think I'm going to start with the Truly Victorian bodice front and potentially side and then kind of add the tail to it from this pattern right here for the back. So I just wanted to show you how I do this when I cut out a big pattern like this where there's a whole lot of sizes and I don't need the largest size. So basically whenever there's a weird confusing line I trace it out in highlighter and then if it's a curve I cut little notches in it like this so that I I can then fold along that curve. We'll see if I can do this one handed here. And that way I can then use the pattern and cut it along the actual markings. I'll have to fix that when I'm using two hands, but you get the gist basically like that folding into my line. Now with this one, as I mentioned before, the measurements like where I lie on the measurement charts are really funky. So I'm honestly kind of thinking that I probably need this shoulder taller. I don't understand why with each size on this pattern piece, it gets really significantly taller. Like we're not subtracting anything from the bottom here. We're just adding a lot 
lot of height to the top. And of course, people who are wider are not necessarily taller. So yeah, that seems weird to me. So I have a feeling I'm going to need taller than a J up here. So I'm kind of going to probably once I get everything else folded in, I'm going to just hold this up to myself and see what might be right. And then I might just like cut more length than I need so that I can always just have a big seam allowance on my mock-up and see where it is that I actually lie on this pattern. So I'm cutting out all of the pieces right now for my mock-up and I've decided to cut the size K for the front and I for the backs to try to get that like front versus back adjustment. And then I'm just cutting all the way up to the top for the shoulders and the neckline. I'm making little marks at where the sizes are that I actually need, but we'll see, you know, how much I actually might need that extension. But the one thing that I wanted to show you here is a little tip that I have for marking your darts. So what I do is I basically take a large pin and I just like wiggle around in the hole that I need for points. And then I make several others as well. And then I just take my friction pen and I like deeply color in those little holes. And what I wind up getting is little dots all over and then I connect the dots and then from there I just then transfer it onto the other side if I'm cutting two at once which I am right here. So likewise to transfer those markings to the other side what I do is I put little pins in each of those original dots that I made after I draw the lines in and then I flip it over and I draw dots where the pins are sticking out of this side and then connect those dots. All right, so I have my mock-up on, and yes, this is made out of old sheets. I'm almost out of old sheets, but this is made out of old sheets from my parents' house from, I don't even know how old these are. And there are definitely some issues here, which you can probably tell even just from looking at this patterned fabric. So if you remember, I did cut the shoulders all the way to the largest size because of the height. And I think that in a lot of ways that was really, really good because honestly, like the bottom of this arm's eye is sitting in the front where it needs to be. Now you might notice that in the back, it's really not, I don't know what is going on above that side back piece, but it's really like low. And maybe that was because of the whole cutting the back to the size I, instead of like size J and then cutting to the front to the size K, what I feel like I'm getting, and it's probably just my chemise. I really hate this chemise. This is my mid-century chemise and it makes things feel weird. But yeah, so it is, it's just the chemise that's pulling my shoulders in the front. So I think that the fit of the front here is okay. Now those pads that I mentioned that came with the simplicity pattern, they would go in here. So you see how there's kind of wrinkling excess here? Having a pad there would help to fill that out so that you don't get that wrinkly excess bit. But I'm having a lot more fit issues than that. The biggest fit issue that I'm facing is, well, there's it's kind of twofold. The front is coming way farther closed up here as it always does on me. We've talked about this many, many times on my channel if you've been here before, the fact that yes, I probably need some sort of a full bust adjustment, but the multiple times that I've attempted a full bust adjustment, it has never worked for me. But I am definitely small up here compared to my bust. I'm also finding with this pattern that I'm very small in the waist compared to the bust. So yeah, full bust adjustment's probably a thing that I could use, but again, doesn't seem to work. So the waist is overlapping like a ridiculous amount in here. Like it's, we're talking here. This is supposed to be an even, like it's supposed to be here-ish, I believe. So you can see that it's huge if I do that. I think what's going on here though is the fact that this pattern has very, very small darts in the front. Like smaller than any other front darts that I think I've ever used. So I'm going to put this on inside out and just pin the darts to where I think they need to be for me. This I will have to figure out how to work with that, especially because I do have a plaid where it's going to be really obvious if I just like curve it in above the bust, which is what I usually tend to do, is basically I will have that center front instead of it being a straight line, it will be a curved line. That is very common on extants. You see that a lot, honestly. And sometimes you even see that they actually take a little bit of a dart here to curve it. So basically it would like 
pinch out that way to curve it, which I suppose would probably make the pattern better. It might be something that I try because we'll see. But then of course you have a dart. So unless I can hide that dart really nicely in the plaid, I don't know if that's the best option. But again, we'll see about that. So I am going to go ahead and put this on in a second inside out to fix that. But the one other thing that I want to talk about is, first off, you can see like the length, lengthening the shoulders there. Again, I think we're actually in a pretty good place because it is mm, mm, barely, it might need to be lengthened a little bit more under the arm because like the seam allowance still has to come away from this when we turn up the bottom and finish the bottom edge and I think at that point I would lose the waist overlap and I need this to go past where my waistband sits so right now I am wearing a hoop skirt and petticoat I've not made the skirt yet obviously since this is the first video and uh, the basically the bodice once it's finished on the bottom needs to come to here and I don't think we're quite there so I do think that needs a little bit of a lengthening the front point is like weird and I don't know if it's a waist thing or what but it is like really wide here, which shouldn't be. The 1850s was much more about a uh, more pointy point. So yeah, some of this is gonna need to get curved away, like cut off. And I think that will also help the fit in this area as well, because like my body goes out here cause I have a hoop skirt on and it's not working to fit over that and then the last one other thing here is the back tail I don't like it it's it's weirdly long weirdly narrow I kind of followed the lines of combining the patterns of fashion 1861 pattern with the pattern that I was working with and yeah I do not like this so I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do but it's gonna be something because that's just it's just weird looking so yeah I've got a lot of work to do, but first I'm going to put this on inside out to figure out the dart situation. So I lied. I was looking in the mirror before I went to go turn it on inside out. And I noticed that actually we are a little long in the shoulder because by pulling up the shoulder, that side back piece does seem like it's coming a little bit more where it needs to be. So we do have too much here in the shoulder. So once I put this on inside out, I'm also going to figure out how much of that needs to go away. So I have it on inside out now, as you can see. The first thing that I did before actually putting it on was to take up the shoulder. So you can see that pinned out a little bit here. I think it's just like, I want to say three eighths of an inch or so on each side that I pinned out. Now that is doing screwy things with the neckline because I didn't cut away the neckline. So right now I'm getting really weird lines and like weird overlap here, but I think it's because of the shoulder thing going on and it's actually less of a full overlap than I thought it was before. So maybe that's good. And then the other things that I've done here is I have pinned in this first dart on each side. And again, I think I'm taking this in like three quarters of an inch total on each side. Um, so yeah, there's a lot that has come in there. And then I've also pinned up more of a point. Now the thing with this era of bodice points is that usually you actually do see it, except for some ball gowns, you do see it coming actually below even and like curving back out a little bit, kind of like this fashion plate right here, where you can see that it's actually longer, curves back out and then comes into that point. Now where I folded it up, like this is a raw edge on the very point. So I need more length there to be able to get a point this deep at all because obviously you have to fold it up you can't just leave a raw edge point whereas like over here I've got a bunch folded up inside there's at least an inch if not more that has been tucked up inside around here on the curve so we're definitely doing some different things here and I will have to recut this a little bit longer so that I get that slight curve out and have room for seam allowance so I guess if anything, it might be more lengthening the point than it is like folding up the sides because it could be the sides are actually kind of right and the point is just not long enough to combat all of that. Though also I didn't actually fold it up here and it's not long enough at the side seam either. This definitely needs more length. Like there is no seam allowance and it should be probably to about where my thumbnail is 
and then plus seam allowance. So yeah, it definitely need more length on that. I also do wonder if I still need more within the shoulder right there where it's cutting too far away from like the curve of the arm's eye. I think that needs to be filled in because I don't really think that we had weird arm's eye shapes like we did in the 18th century or the Regency period by now. It was pretty normal, especially with this sloped shoulder. I do like the slope of the shoulder. I think that it's hitting in a good place, even though it seems so far out here. I think it is actually pretty darn good. And if I want to help this wrinkly bit, again, I can just put pads in there. And then the one other thing with the back is that I found this fashion plate right here. Now it does not have the writing on this particular fashion plate, but the lady with her is in another fashion plate that is definitely from 1858. So either this image is from DeviantArt. So either someone has gone and meshed two fashion plates together or this fashion plate, this other lady like actually existed in two plates and her partner here has a nice little tail in the back. So I like that little tail. Now her tail is basically starting from the side seam here, whereas mine I started curving out kind of right here where my finger is and that's why I'm getting this really narrow tail. So if I start from here, I can curve it out a little bit sooner and get a better line to get more like this fashion plate. And I think that is what I want to do because then I can have my little point in front and then have the curve, you know, where I like it and then curve it out here to get a little bit more of that tail. I think that is going to be better. So I think I am going to have to cut more pieces with this. At the very least, I need to cut a side back piece and put that in with the new tail shape to see if that will work. I'm running out of sheets, as I mentioned. So like if I cut more pieces, it's going to have to be like actual fabric, which sucks. Apparently I need to go thrifting and get some sheets. So yeah, I don't know that I'm ready to cut it out in the silk yet, though, is the thing. I'm going to take measurements of where I think that needs to come out in that side back of the arm's eye. I'm going to cut off the excess of the shoulders so that I can fix the neckline. And I'm going to actually sew in these darts where I have them pinned so that I can put this on right side out because it looks off center right now because you're seeing the lap. But the like center is here where this side is folded right here. That is actually center. So you're seeing the inside. So it looks weird. So yeah, still a lot of work to do, and I really have to figure out this whole hem situation and neckline situation. Okay, I think that doing a lot of those changes that I showed you before on the inside really worked, because now I have this on outside out, and right side out, and I have sewn the new darts, I've sewn the new shoulders, and I've cut away the neckline, and just doing that, I mean, look at the improvement to this fit. I did also fold in the new, like, center on here. I haven't measured how much that is taking away, but it definitely is going to be curving in above the bust. I think that's just going to be the easiest way to do it, and hopefully it will look okay in the plaid. I guess we will see how that looks in the plaid, but yeah, hopefully that will work, but it'll curve away and then just kind of, you know, you'll see the plaid separate kind of on both sides, so should be okay. But yeah, that all looks really, really good. So now really the only question would be the hem area, and I don't want to recut the fronts. I really, really don't. So I think I'm going to chance it with the front with like adding the half inch here, adding the like three quarter inches that will curve kind of outward below the waist here and then figuring out what that line is in between them and just do that on the actual fabric. Uh, the back side backs I am going to recut, especially because that I can get on the scraps and stuff that I have left. Those are smaller pieces and I'm going to try and figure out that tail. This one I'm starting to like I'm starting to hate less than I did before. Like this is starting to grow on me, but it's still, it's just not the right shape. So I need to do something with that back tail. So I'm going to recut just one side piece, back side piece, and see what that does. If I can figure out the right shape to get that other one that I showed you a few minutes ago. And yeah, hopefully that will work out. And then I can go ahead and cut the silk. Okay, I think that we are close on the tail here. I think you can see this here where it's kind of like wrinkling up. It's actually basically too large for what I have going here as far as like the skirt. It's too, it wants more of a flare of the skirt. So 
I will have more a little bit under there when there is a skirt on, obviously, since right now I'm just wearing petticoat. So I'm a little bit hesitant to like remove that because I don't want it to get too tight. So part of me is thinking, cut it out as is, like with the silk and everything, make it up, don't bind off the bottom, you know, don't finish off the edge until I have the skirt done at which point I can then see if that seam needs to be taken in a little bit down here. Cause otherwise I think that the shape, like the actual curve shape here is pretty spot on. The one other hesitation that I'm having is if it's possibly too long, uh, like in the center, I've actually folded it up significantly from where I had first cut it. So it is a lot shorter, like a couple inches shorter than where it was before, but it might still be just a little bit long for this era. So yeah, I think what I'm going to do is cut out the bodice like I have it here, except, you know, adding that little bit extra here in the front to like the point. I did actually add here. So that is where it would go to right here on the side seam. Like that's where the front will go to and it'll curve out below the, where my natural waist is. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut it all out. I am planning to flatline this with twill Pretty sure I have enough. If I don't have enough, it's gonna get lined with Kona cotton. But if I have enough twill, that's what's gonna be flat lined too. And then it'll be the purple silk. I do have to figure out potentially about matching plaids. But I think that honestly, since I don't have a center back seam, I think that as long as I cut the front so that both pieces are even, like so that I cut all of the pieces even. The side backs will have an even plaid, the fronts will have an even plaid, the back will be on the fold, so it doesn't really matter, it's already gonna be even. I think as long as I cut it evenly, I'm not gonna worry about matching it on the seams, cause that is just a level that I don't wanna take it to, honestly. And yeah, I just don't have the patience for that. So I think otherwise we're good. Oh, I guess the other thing that I wanted to show you, I don't know how well it's gonna show up on camera here, but I looked at where I had the fold. It's actually only folded in like three eighths of an inch or a half inch at top past where like the regular fold of the pattern said it would be. So it's really not that much that's getting cut away from the neckline up here. So I think I'm in a pretty okay place. The one other note that I have on this pattern that I find odd is that even reading the instructions, it tells you on this front edge here to fold in one and a quarter inches. However, the point down here at the bottom is not one and a quarter inches, it's one inch. So, I mean, I'm changing my point anyway, but yeah, just keep that in mind that the point is not where the fold is. I think that's a pattern error. So if you're making this pattern, just either add a little extra to where you need to fold it in, like add a little extra width, or move your point so that it, the point is actually one and a quarter inches from the edge of the pattern, because it is not right. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead, cut everything out, and put together the silk bodice. I have all of the bodice pieces now put together. I know I didn't talk you through how to do any of this, and that is because I did it in the usual way, as in the way that I do all of my bodices. I flatlined the twill to the taffeta with the serger, going around all of the edges with the serger, and then just sewed them together by the machine. <laughs> That's it. So really very, very simple. So the one thing that I didn't really pay a special attention to when I was cutting this out was the shape of the point because I knew I wanted to lengthen it. And then of course darts get in the way and all of that sort of stuff. So I basically just left it long and I'm now going to go in and make sure that I have a good point and cut away any excess because I think that I have excess. Well, I, I know I do at least in the fact that like the dart sections don't line up. So like for sure, you know, it would at least wind up being something like this, but I think that is still, actually that might be a pretty good point. I'll have to look in the mirror because it's hard to see in the little monitor, but that's a lot better than it was before I lengthened the bodice. And as you can see with lengthening the bodice, it now has a good length here on the sides where it hits my natural waist and then curves out just a tiny bit below that. And then we've got the little tail in the back, which again, it's hard to see in the monitor, but 
I really don't want to take out any of that excess, like I mentioned before, until I have the actual skirt on underneath. But that will be in next week's video. So I'm going to fix the bottom point here, and uh, then that'll be it for today. All right, I have folded up the sides here. It really was just folding up like where the excess went below the darts, like where the dart parts didn't match up evenly that I had to really get out of the way. Otherwise, I think it's creating a very, very nice shape. I've even folded up the very center so that, you know, there's no raw edges or anything like that. And again, it's creating a super nice shape on there. And I did look at the tail in the mirror. I think it's looking pretty good. Uh, again, I do want to leave it for when I have skirts on, but otherwise I do quite like the shape. I think it's pretty cute. So yeah, here we go. We have a bodice. And by the way, like where this curves in, I don't think it's really interrupting the plaid much at all. So you can see it just kind of the two lines just kind of come together there where they're a little bit more out here. So yeah, I really like how the plaid matched up in the front. It does not match up anywhere else, <laughs> like literally anywhere else with the matching plaid, but that is okay. I was not intending for that. Often, in fact, most of the time, they didn't do that either. So it's a more modern thing of like, plaid always has to match because they tended to be like, we have to conserve fabric, which, yeah, exactly. So anyway, that is going to be it for me for this video. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram, that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks right here on YouTube right below the video. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon and Mirage. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!